Can, can he do it? All right. Okay. Got it? Yep, you, you got your skin. Let's do the shuffle. Do the shuffle. I don't like to use a stinger hook. So what I actually do, I'm gonna put a twist to the body of the middle. Get that hook way back there. Oh, nice fish. Oh, Woo -hoo. Yeah. Nice job, Brian. I'll tell you what. Get him up! Woo -hoo. Fish on. on! You know, so I'm going to tell you something, Brian. If that sturgeon's 100 pounds, I don't know if I want him in on top of the ice. I think I'd rather have him below the ice. With you holding on to that fish, the ice is sinking some more. See, the water's getting deeper. Oh, I see that. We might have to move the shack after this one. Oh, oh. That, that is a big one. That, that's <laughs> a thumper for sure. Well, he's doing a circle for you. Oh, he is. So actually, you know what? He's not. I don't have a ton of line out right here. I think that the fish is actually pretty, pretty close. I don't know if he's just toying with me. He doesn't know he's hooked yet. Oh, broke him off. Oh, too much torque. No. Okay, ready? Yep. Okay. Got her. Yep. You got your steering. Hang on. I'm kind of kicking the bucket as we go. Let's do the shuffle. Do the shuffle. Let's do the door towards the the shore. Door towards the shore. Okay. Gosh. It's a nice fish, whatever it is. It is. It's a nice walleye. It is. It is? That's a huge walleye if it is. It is, it is, it is. It's a nice walleye. Oh my gosh. Dude, that's a nice fish. Oh, I love this rod. Oh, look at that reel. I swore I seen a white. I think it's a sturgeon. I swore I'm going to walleye you. No. no I'll tell walleye. you what, folks. If this is a walleye, it's a big fish. I thought I saw a white. <laughs> I think Claremont's beard got in the, yeah, in the way of his been, eyes. Yeah, it might have been a little beard stuck right. out of here. Because this isn't fighting like a walleye, but I'm going to fight him out like it is. It is. Oh, here we go. Right there. What do you got? There it is right there. What was that tail? Oh, sturgeon. Tail. Gotta get, got him. I think I do. You, oh, you're gonna bring him in backwards. I think I do. I think oh, you got him. I think I do. I think Can I do. he do it? All right. I don't know if I got him very good. Anybody try? I hope. All right, cool. Woo hoo! Look at that. No, it's a weird looking walleye, folks. And again, that's just a nice little sturgeon. Last fall, we caught some absolutely giants. We had an excellent day, yes. which we, with, you know what? We've had a lot of good times together, my yes, friend. Yes, we have, a lot let's, more to come. Yep, let's let this little guy go. See you later, buddy. Right, hey, tell the walleyes we we're up here. here. Yeah, we need some walleyes. Well, oh, that is good. I love that. You know, that's a great part about fishing. Food and fishing go along hand in hand, don't they? Definitely. And we eat fishing. That's right. That's a big fish. Okay. This is no way a walleye this time. If it is, it's 30 pounds. This thing is definitely, and this, is, this has got to be a big sturgeon. Oh, that thing is strong. Yeah, he's got a lot of weight. I am gaining some line. There he goes. Oh, that's the last oh, that's one. Nice. Oh, there he goes. Get the hook out of him. Hey, I'll tell you what, Brian. Every time I catch a sturgeon, look at all the water that comes up. We got to move the shack. <laughs> Still not a walleye yet. We had a couple walleye bites. But these are always fun to catch, oh, too. Yeah. Look at all speed up. Look at all beat up. Looks like something took a chunk out of it. Yeah. Yeah, he might have got hit by a prop or something when he was smaller. Yeah. But pretty fish. And they are fun. <laughs> they are fun. Rod. Hey, you know, no doubt about that. You know, it took me about probably 10, 15 minutes to get this fish in. I'm going to let him go. Get him back down. Hey, tell the walleyes we're up here, okay? Yeah, we want a walleyes. There walleyes. you go. We want some gold. Hey Brian, you know, you're using a jig and wrap and I'm using uh, a jig itself, but why don't you show everybody how you're actually rigging that jig and rappella? Okay, these jig and wraps, 
So, number one, I like to use that loop knot. Okay, you know, show everybody how you have that on there. And little, the reason for that is you get totally a different action a different out of the kind bait. Of action, and sometimes a direct tie is better, but I, I really think that that loop knot helps give me a lot of action. Okay. And then I got fluorocarbon on there with a barrel swivel. That front hook, that first thing to go on that is I cut that off there. I've lost get rid so of it, huh? many fish getting hooked on the ice right when you're pulling them up through yes, uh, up yes. through the hole and how many fish do you ever really hook on that front hook if you uh, think about it very very every very now and then you do but very seldom and then another little trick i do too is you see that front treble hook that's going straight towards the fit towards the, the nose yep what i do is i hook my minnow on there and what i do is i just hook them through the lips here Okay. Nice and deep like that. And you're always using the hook that faces back, huh? Nope, that faces forward. Oh, forward, so okay. Faces forward on that one. Yep. And then what I always do is I always take a little piece of rubber and I put it on her because, again, you're, you're jigging these so aggressively. That if you, you don't, that minnow's going to come off, that huh? That will be off on there right away. And that, that helps hold it on there. And now when you pull on that, what happens is when it pulls, you see all that, that minnow comes this way. Yep. And it's nice and straight. And you know what, we've said this over and over, Brian, that little things make a big difference. There might be two or three little things that you're doing that make that difference. Make the difference between catching fish and not. And another thing on this too is I like putting lure lipstick on there too. I don't have it all no. right now, but. Just to give it a little extra scent. Yep, a little extra scent. Hey, I'll tell you, you know what, Brian, what I'm doing is totally something different than what you are. I'm using the slow poke, LS means long shank. And you ask, why am I using a long shank hook for live bait? A lot of times you use a long shank hook for plastics, but I'm using it for live bait and I'll show you why. I don't like to use a stinger hook. So what I actually do, see, I'll go right through the mouth of the minnow. I kind of give them a little squeeze right there. And I'll go right, th right through the mouth. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come right out the gill plate right there. See that? I'm going to put a twist to the body of the minnow, get that hook way back there, right in the center. Now look how far back with that long shank, shanked hook I've got that placement. I don't have to use a stinger when you're using a long shank hook like that. I think a lot of times these fish come up behind it and they kind of mouth it a little bit before they take that second grab on it. And if you have a stinger hook in there, a lot of times they'll feel that, especially like a day like today or night like tonight when things are, the fish are very sluggish for sure. Oh, nice fish. Oh, Woo -hoo. We got nice job, Brian. I'll tell you what, unbelievable right there. Hold that fish up. Nice job. You know something, you said that it just takes a little bit of time. Yep. And I had just missed one and we caught, you know, four sturgeon so far. That is definitely a nice fish. And that's Here. a great eating fish right there. It's yeah. probably about 17, 18 inches. Hey, look at the nice build Perfect. on that fish too. This is Wisconsin gold. Yeah, it is. That's what it is. Something people are probably gonna say is that we're crazy to be on this, this thin of ice. And you really, you do gotta be a little crazy to come out here because realistically, we are fishing a lot of current and there's only two and a half inches of ice there. But you know, the, the, the thing is, and we talked about this a little bit earlier when the camera was off, the key to anything is to being responsible for yourself and to, if something does happen, to be able to take care of it yourself. Now, Obviously, all, both of us are wearing picks around our, our necks here just in case we fall in. Um, but the other part is that, you know what, we are prepared. Got a throw cushion with a rope on it there too. A must. Yeah, a must for sure. And, you know, we've got a nebulous with us. So if the ice does break, you know what, this in seconds will, will blow up. And, uh, you know, you can get three people in one of these nebuluses. Um, they're about 600 bucks. I'll tell you, I would not come out on the ice, especially in a situation like this without that. So, you know, again, being responsible is definitely the big thing when you're gonna fish these kind of conditions. Um, we're diehard fishermen like most people are, but we also are prepared for, for any situation that's gonna happen. Well, we, you know, it gets to the point where you gotta be prepared for, you know, what can happen. Right. And we know that we're on thin ice here, so we're prepared if something does happen and nobody's going to get hurt. That's that's the big thing right there for sure. I went from sturgeon to missing walleyes to mud puppies now. Kind of creepy looking things. 
They kind of slither. All right, there we go. Trail of mud puppies. Hopefully, they don't crawl in your camera case. Hey, I'll tell you what, Brian. We didn't crush the fish tonight. I've caught three really nice sturgeon that I got through the hole. You caught a couple of walleyes. I missed a few. You know, it's still a great night. You know what, this is the first time in all these years that you and I have ever ice fished together and I had a ball, I'll tell you that. Hey, what a oh, unique fun. experience. You know what, we took a shot at it tonight. Again, we only had this small piece of ice to fish on. Um, last week, you were killing them off the bridge right there. We figured tonight they'd be in the spot, and typically they are. Yep, typically they are. This front must have them shut down a little bit tonight, but like I said, you can't catch them all the time. Yeah, you can't. So if people want to get a hold of you, Brian, and we, I always have a good time with you, tell them how they can yep, do it. You can hit me up on Facebook at uh, BAC Guide Service or you can uh, call me at home at 715-735-7346. That's easy enough, huh? You betcha. Hey, my friend, again, thank you again for inviting me up here. Hey, you know, we always have a good time when we're out fishing. It's not about how many fish you can catch. It's really about building memories and spending time in the outdoors. And you know, like I always say, just remember, it's a great day to be alive.